Go from sky sunshine um, to, to another sunshine. Uh, long time no see, bro. Um, you, your face tells a, speaks a thousand words, in my opinion, mate. Oh, bro, I just tapped out, man. Like, I'm not emotionally invested in this this team, man. So, from you, you know me from the longest, from the start of the season, bro. I said certain things would happen to this team. Um, agreed and fair play. Some of the factors I didn't factor in in terms of injuries, in terms of certain signings that were available, not stepping up. But in a nutshell, I kind of foresaw us going backwards this season. Did I think it'd be this bad? No. Did I anticipate the, how can I put it? In my opinion, at certain times, did I anticipate the pressure coming from a fan base onto a manager when I didn't think it was necessary? No. Maybe I should have foresaw that because we've seen it many a times. So that's why players get away with it and managers don't. Um, you've seen it over the past six years. Use the facts that are there. Um, one year, amazing. Second year, managers in a situation. And then, boom, you know, players get away with it. We live scot-free. It is what it is. So maybe I should have foresaw that as well. But today was probably the worst performance I've seen and worst result, man. Um, and, and to me, Terry... Um, like it or not, I may say some things that are not going to touch on the heartstrings of those that are feeling how they feel right now. But for me personally, I've said it before, Rhino's in the chat. He can concur. I've said it in the group chat from a long time. Doesn't matter what team we play. Doesn't matter who it is. Our mentality on these players, the moment they like shit hits the fan, they can't hack it. And if you can't apply your talent, your talent means Nish Bati to me. If you don't have an, a, a, a heart for application, you can't apply what you're good at or you're meant to be decent at. doesn't matter about tactics. doesn't matter about no manager. And this is, again, transparent across every single manager I've seen before. So nothing I'm saying has not been seen before already. It's just the fact that we're living in this moment now and we're hoping we can go, we can kind of overlook what we've seen with other managers and go, yeah, something's going to be different. And I think it's going to be the same every single time. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm saying all this. Today was the worst performance for me that I've seen Ten Hag do in terms of uh, substitutions. No one was saying shit at 3-0. No, I wasn't celebrating, guys, don't get me wrong, and I don't think you guys were either. But no one was saying, oh, Ten Hag, shit at 3-0. It was only when he made the substitution. Right, 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 I'll give right on that. And for me, personally, when I look at the substitutions, I didn't... Yes, Garnacho didn't play very well, neither did Rashford. However, the, the naivety for me from Ten Hag came from... If you know your your players all season, haven't got the mentality to maintain 3 0 leads. If we're if we're Man City and we're free up, Liverpool free up, I understand, you know, give certain players a rest, Kobe Minor. But right now, bro, you're fighting for your job. Like shit's on the line. Yes, it's Coventry, it's a semi-final, but there's no way you should be leaving on Rashford when there are worse players to take off first. Okay, you need to sub Garnacho, do it 70th minute when you've definitely clarified that they aren't scoring three goals within 20 minutes because that can happen in football but for me personally those substitutions make no sense to me and like you said Terry as soon as flipping um, Menu came off what happened? Absolute flop yeah. in midfield yeah. and it got worse and worse and worse now I will say this before I end massive credit to Coventry were they the deserving team? 100% anyone who says no just they're just not football fans respectfully I don't think anyone mm -hmm. can say that um, even if you're 10 hog in doesn't matter um, like regardless, like Coventry deserved that. Um, but it, it, it's, it's been the season. It's been the season for us where we just haven't got the mentality to apply ourselves. And I think this is not a case of something that's been happening every single game, which most fans will tell you. It's been a build up to this, and this is why I say players always get away with shit because we've got a new culture now, Terry. Where because they've not been accountable for previous managers and situations because they get away with it, we've got a new we that same those same crop of players from three, four managers ago, are still in there. That mentality is still at our club. And this is why I've said, no matter what manager, what players you bring in, that mentality is going to be adapted. Until we have a clear out. By the way, I will say this, because obviously, I know some people in their feelings, it may, may drag people's, uh, how can I put it, attention uh, when I'm saying these things. Because again, obviously a lot of people are 10 hog out. However, what I will say is, there are situations where if any of us say 10 hog out, I'm cool with that. I've said that many a times. It's not an issue because the structure is there. I've got no issue with that. But what I will have an issue is, is if players like Rashford are getting extra contracts and not being sold. There are certain players that need to get gone. Like, adios. Like, you're not carrying the right mentality to bring our club forward. You haven't got the bottle 
the yeah. mentality to play for that badge, even if you're two 0 down, three 0 down, because the wages yeah. say so, I, and the pre- the the I, I, I agree. The club is I, player I, power twenty four seven. I'm sick I, of I agree. I agree with you, and I think even if some players like Rashford next season look great under the new regime when the think going gets good, what we have seen from so many of these players is they can't handle it when the pressure's on. Say we become a team that's challenging again, they're going to crumble because we know they can't handle pressure. So be awesome, the, the, acid, the acid test is there on that. And by the way, I agree. I, I, when we got the 3-0 up, I wasn't happy. I was okay. Then I was thinking, right, go on now and score four, five, six, and we can mm-hmm. say good result, a bit of a party. Mm-hmm. The fact we went from that to... Three, three. I just don't think anyone can be be, be happy with that at all. And, and, and sunshine, appreciate that, mate. Um, we will come back to some more. There's, there's a lot to get through. Uh, Rhino, talk to me, brother. Listen, I'm going to take my time when I speak. I don't want to get this channel demonetized yet, so I'm going to take my time. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, Ten Hag is a con artist. Yeah, he's a con artist. You know, when you go to those magic shows and they put their they put someone goes and sits in the box and they just disappear and then there's some sort of trick behind it or when they put their sword through you're thinking oh how did the sword go through and then they've slipped through the bottom ten hug is a con artist he has scammed his way into an fa cup final let me say something here look at the end of the day yeah everything everyone is saying is right to be fair in terms of the the series of years we've had under different managers the same culture the player power all of that is right. But here's where I disagree. I feel like we just haven't had the right manager. That's the reality of it. Obviously, as well as factoring the structure around it, because that plays a very big fact, a factor in this whole thing. Like any manager that comes into this sort of system is going to struggle because of the way we buy players, the wages and all of this stuff, the way we get rid of players and all of that. But I don't think no one has come and been consistent with their direction. These players looked lost to me. When we were 3-0 up, actually, when we went 1-0 up, I kind of thought to myself, okay, let's see how long they can keep the lead for. Then we went up to 3, I thought, okay, wow, say no more. But I felt embarrassed how we got to 3-0. I felt so disgusted. I felt so uncomfortable watching that game. We're playing against Coventry, people. Coventry. And these Premier League players cannot do nothing against this team. But my thing was, they didn't even know what to do. Forget even trying to figure out that we can put someone like Ahmad and Ericsson and maybe Anthony to control the ball to try and unpick a low block. They just didn't even know what to do. They were passing it around. They were guessing, should I run? Should I, should I come back? They, 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 there was no direction. So for me, this was freestyle football. This was improvisation. This was initiative. This was, let's think of it on the go. That's what we saw right now. That's what we saw in that game. It was absolutely shocking. And Stand then on top that, of that, Go on. It's not even freestyle because at least freestyle is fun. At least freestyle yeah. is a little bit. Of, Ali, yeah. A bit of yeah. This is, yeah. This, there's something there. There's flair. There's real football. Yeah. 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 I got nothing left football. This yeah. is what this is. Their players didn't know what they were doing. They didn't have no idea. And that for me goes straight to the coaching. And maybe they're throwing them under the bus. Maybe they've said to, to ourselves, you know what? Like, and what a bit of what Neji said, these players have decided, you know what? Let's just give up and let's just throw in the towel. But I'm absolutely embarrassed to support this club at this time. And just to see that we're struggling against teams like Coventry is shocking to me. I just can't believe it. Then we're 3-0 up and then we let the lead slip and then they could have even won from the offside. I said to myself, offside or not, I'm not hearing it. So I just feel like Ten Hag has definitely lost the faith in these players. And I just think that if there was some sort of direction and we could control the games and the players had a bit of idea of what they were doing, we could hold on to leads and that would help their mentality. I think if there was some sort of foundation that he set and there was a belief in the players from the manager, that that at least could get us through the games and then we can start working on the mentality and start, you know, because think about it like this. If you have a system and a style of play and you just know what you're doing and you're sailing through the game, one no, two no, three no up, that breeds more confidence because it's easy. You're, and then you just know what to do and you just keep on doing it. Five, by the time you know it, it's six nil and you're thinking, yes. And then at that time, you can just use the direction and plan of the game to just defend. You don't even have to be on the back foot. You can just use the style of football and the system that you've installed into that game to just to, to see the whole game through. And that's it. So I think because we've never had no direction, I know there's been managers in the past that I've had some sort of style. Maybe it's been a bit more defensive and whatever. Now we're trying to play front foot. These players can't do a lot of things, but 
you just need to look at last year, build a foundation and then work on it from that. And another reason why I disagree on the whole mentality thing, to a degree, it makes sense because new players have come in and they've adopted it. But you can't tell me players like Casemiro, players like even like Martinez, these players that have got strong minds, even someone looking like someone like Dallo, they have their bad games too. And it's, they don't have bad mentalities, but it just feels like these players have just lost direction. You've got Anthony. Anthony's coming from a, a, a signing. How many signings has Ten Hag made that even these players that we thought would be a bit different? I know you can say, okay, maybe they've just been infected by whatever's at the club already. So fair enough. Everyone's just poisoned from the poison that we have at this club. But well, I just well, think with no... Yeah, go well, on. Closely. But yeah, but, but that's, that's been my point forever. Like, yeah, if, there yeah. is a, if there is a culture, it's like... You've all, you've all seen the yeah. rotten fruit analogy. You know, you can have whatever type of fruit together. If it's mouldy, you can put fresh fruit next to it. It starts to build mould. And yeah. I'm looking at that as a mentality thing. That That's how it's always been for me. So, yes, you can bring in players. Don't, don't, let's not get it twisted. We were gasped when Molassi played his first game, when Anthony played yeah. his first game, because we saw them actually trying. Most people's comments, if you go back to it, were like, raw. We actually looked like we wanted to play football. That's how it starts with every single manager. With every new manager, yeah. whenever there's a nice little bit of momentum, but then to maintain something is a completely different thing for me. And I've always said that we don't have that within our culture anymore. We don't have the never die attitude. And I genuinely believe it's because we've let so many players have new contracts based off one season where they've been amazing. And then we can't get rid of them when the next manager comes in and says, I don't want to work with that player, not because he's shit, but because he doesn't fit my per personality or style, then it becomes an issue. So now you're having these types of players, which then if, then goes into their mentality. And they're, again, it has a knock-on effect for the next manager. So every new manager that comes in has to then deal with the previous issues and the previous issues. We've all seen, we, again, I'll give you one more analogy before I end my, end my rant. We've all seen the the, the healing um, video with the Coke in a, in a glass and how much water it takes to then remove that, that, that Coke, right? Yeah, it's no different. But every time a new manager comes in, people have been adding Coke and then they have to keep adding water. It takes time. Yeah, yeah. So for me personally, yeah. Yeah. this is why this is why I do sympathise with any manager that has come in. That's why I've said there are consistency with every manager that happens. However, it does not put to bed certain things that managers are doing that are wrong. It's just the simple yeah. fact is when a manager makes a mistake at Man United, it's amplified because we're more desperate. And this is the issue. I, I, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. No, I, no, I no, totally agree. I totally agree. And I think, look, I think, Rhino, your point, we, we haven't had the right manager at any point in this 10-year period. On top of that, we haven't had the right structure, which is the, the, actually before these results is the biggest reason I wanted Ten Hag to move on because I feel that he has been tarnished by everything that's gone on. And I want a completely fresh start. But you, I just, see, so I just want to show some footage that someone just sent through to me. It won't be copyright because it's from someone's phone so we can play it. Any Man United fan who's saying you should be celebrating like crazy, just look here. And it's a little bit small, but just look here at our players when Rasmus scores this penalty. Yeah! Barely any of them run and celebrate. Yeah. That for me, there again, I'm not defending yeah. these players per se, but that there tells you that they are in embarrassed and Rasmus. rightfully so <laughs> but you know it's deeper than just i had a bad game today you know they're looking at this saying we hate how we play we hate how we drilled we don't feel confident and of course it isn't right that some of them put in those performances i'm not defending them in that regard but that's i've never seen a celebration in a semi-final where barely anybody runs to the, the winner and six or seven just stay standing on the in, in the middle of I the pitch. I thought the exact crazy. same thing when I saw that, man. I was like, they're not even going to celebrate because yeah, they because, know. But the thing is, know. I'm glad they did because if they did, I'm glad if they actually ran over and celebrated, yeah. that would have been the most shameless yeah. thing. It's, like, it's, it certainly would have been. Uh, Michael, give us your thoughts, mate. Yeah, I, I generally believe that Manchester United are the worst club in Europe. Like playing wise, I I watch all those top five leagues. I promise you, Strasbourg. If you go to France, Lorient, all these clubs, Syria, Cagliari, all those clubs play better football than Manchester United today. Bro, if you win a semi final, you should feel happy. No matter who you play, you should feel happy that you're going to an FA Cup final against your rival in Manchester City. Like you have a chance to avenge your loss from last year. Now, when we go into that game, we're all thinking we're gonna get battered because Coventry. By the way, shout out to them. But if they approach the game from minute one, the the way they approach it after minute sixty, they would have beaten us today. Because their players before the game were talking. They're like, it's just Manchester United. We're not afraid of them. We, we, we're happy that we're playing them instead of a Chelsea or Manchester City. That's how far we've fallen. Coventry players feel confident going up against Manchester United. 
in the old days, United beat you before you even walked onto the pitch. They yeah, beat you in the fair. tunnel. Yeah. Now they look at us in the tunnel and they just laugh. That's what that's what it feels like. Their goalkeeper, Coventry goalkeeper, bro, he wasn't scared in the penalty shootout. He was tripping every single time. And Bruno was like the one that did that. And then Anthony was cupping his ears after the game. He's the only one that like had any celebration to him. How dare you be that shameless? Because you came on the pitch at 3-0 up. And you were a big reason why we considered the first goal because Dalo was overlapping him and he wanted to shoot from 30 yards out for no reason. That's Anthony. So when Ten Hag goes, the first person you should take with him is Anthony. Back to Ajax, Amsterdam. Always, sometimes it's good to reunite with your ex. Go back there, man. That's what they got to do. Christian Eriksen. Yeah. A couple months ago, he was talking about, oh, I want more minutes. I want more minutes. Well, now we know why you're not getting any minutes. Because the fact that Ten Hag subbed them out when we're winning a game and we need more legs because you know Coventry are going to go at you and you're bringing on someone that has no legs. That looks like Casper the Ghost in midfield because he just can't run there. They were just walking right past him. So easy. Our, our best player is the 18-year-old Kobe Mainu. The second best player you can maybe argue is after Dalo or Garnacho, who, who shows any heart. And then the third best player today you could argue after Bruno was Omari Forsen when he came on. He's the only one that came on and looked like he had something. Yeah. So we're looking at kids yeah. that are the ones that have to carry Megan United. I know that's happened in the past, but when you look at all those players out there, it's the kids. Casemiro. KG's right. That penalty might be the worst penalty I've ever seen because he did not look interested in taking that penalty. He just wanted to hit the ball and then go on with his day. Because he even grabbed the ball right away when the when the like the, the coin flip happened. He grabbed the ball and he just walked there waiting to do it. He's like, I'm just, let me just get on my day. I have somewhere to be after. Saudi Arabia is calling my name. I only got about 30 more days until I have to go over there, enjoy the sunshine and everything. That's what he wanted to do. So that yeah. that's one that's meant to be one of the leaders at Man United because that's what they talk about. Moran, Casemiro, the leaders. A five-time Champions League winner, all that kind of stuff. He didn't care today. And Hoyland, I feel bad for Hoyland in the sense, like, he also has to read the room. Bro, you should know your teammates are probably not happy. I know you want to celebrate you scored the winning pen, but... No, 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 no. Leave Rasmus be, because that's his dream. No, 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 he's still a man. United, United fan. Part. He's a United um, fan, so he's... And if he missed as well, you would have got all the pelters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he did have a bad game. He did have a bad game. He did have a bad game. Yeah, he could have he could have saved us if he had just shot when he turned on. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's the thing. That's... Yeah, no, I do hear that.